my name's Eric Nelson. I graduated in 1995. I'm a, an early childhood educator, and uh, I live in the Pasadena area uh, with my wife, uh, Elisa, and our two dogs, Kenzie and Lachlan. As I said before, I was an educator when I came into this. This was an educational process, and I assumed that I would be an educator when I came out of it. Um, but when I started the process, um, I actually, uh, most of my experience had been in administration. I'd really been an administrator. I'd started a business. I'd been very focused in the business universe of things, as it was. And I felt that I needed um, some support really and it was suggested to me that by being enrolled in the program it might really help me make this kind of uh, life transition as it were from this one uh, uh, business experience uh, moving into something that I wasn't even quite sure what that was going to be. The practices and the principles of the spiritual technology, if you will, of, of what, we, what we learned and how they, how they function um, really have to do, I think, um, first and foremost with a shift, with, with helping us shift our attitude, helping us shift our worldview. So for example, um, in the first month, I believe, they, they talked to us about our life as being a school, life being a school, life being a learning experience. Now I'm an educator, so I would have thought that I would have been very clear about that, but in fact, as educators, we're taught that education only occurs in certain venues, and there's not the idea that, you know, well, the whole scheme of life is, is an educational experience. And it, it really helped me to begin to see that everything, uh, and this was a really profound uh, a learning for me, that everything that was happening was for me. Everything that was happening was for me. There wasn't anything that was against me. That was a paradigm shift for me. And it, it, it didn't mean that I didn't get frustrated or upset when something happened that didn't go my way. But rather than give it more energy, rather than feed it, rather than grab a hold of it and get tangled up with it, instead I, I would just stop and say, okay, what's, what is it, what's here for me in this? What's the opportunity for me in this? That kind of concept of taking things and using them to my advantage and recognizing that they were really a gift, even though I might not like the form they came in, that was, that was, really, that was really profound. And it, it greatly transformed my approach to the work that I did out in the world as an educator because I now had this different view of education. And this different view really gave me an opportunity to practice teaching to others what it was that I was learning. And not everybody who goes through the program is in that position. But I was, and it has been an enormous gift because I've been doing it now for um, uh, 15 years. I was able to let go of being very involved in financial management of the business and things that really didn't have anything to do with me being an educator because I had been attached to them as the founder of the organization that I started. And um, I was uh, successful in writing a grant for an a major educational initiative. And um, so in 2003, we got a million dollars to do an educational program here in Los Angeles County called the Outdoor Classroom Project. Now, uh, you have to understand, I grew up in Central California. I spent my childhood and all of my adult life roaming the Sierra Nevada mountains. And all of a sudden, I was getting to do something that was so heartfelt for me for me. And I had never dreamed that I would be able to bring that element of my life into my work. I remember one day I was, I was out in, um, in our infant yard doing a little observation. We take children at six weeks. And there was a, a child who was about 
six months old. And uh, we leave the doors open to our classroom so that the children can come outside. And so this little boy comes out the door, and I see him out the door. He crawls out on the deck. And the teacher is 30 feet away in a sandbox, which, of course, for, for a child six months old is a long ways. And that little boy came out, looked out the door, saw the teacher, crawled across the deck, down onto the grass, along the grass, up over a little, uh, a, a little uh, uh, piece of uh, wood, a platform, up over a, uh, a what we call a, um, a, uh, a rocker but that was turned upside down. So he kind of went up a little ladder, down a little ladder, kept crawling straight across the grass all the way over to his, to his caregiver, to his teacher in the sandbox, and then sat down in her lap. And, you know, you could just see the, there was, to me, what was so spectacular about that was, for me, it was a great experience to, to watch it happen and to just see the skill and ability. But it was, but it was commonplace for the child. There wasn't anything special about it for him. This was his world. This was his universe, and he was just doing his thing out there. I mean, that that was that was pretty spectacular. That was a spectacular. Because as a child I had this wonderfully positive experience of being outdoors and falling in love with myself and with spirit and with nature, I see children in there and I immediately connect to the experience I had when I was little. So I just go right back into that joy-filled experience. And I was very, very connected spiritually as a small, as a young child. And I think that one of the opportunities we have in working with young children is we have the opportunity to um, really nurture that spiritual connection in them and rather than them lose it when they turn six or seven, actually help them sustain it. I really am so grateful that I have had the USM experience because what it allow, has allowed me to do is it has allowed me to live in the world, recognize it is what it is, and find a place inside of myself in relationship to the world in which I can operate from a place that is really joyful, and positive and knowing that no matter what else is going on I'm in a great place and I'm doing good things and I'm not sure that anybody can really hope for anything much more than that to me that's that's pretty good that's pretty good.